Hey guys, Herpunter for 3 here. Welcome back to Kerbal Conflict. Uh, you are watching a video clip of Bob's adventure, sorry, not Bob's, uh, Bill's adventure in his FLIR truck. It's basically just Bill's old truck fitted with an FLIR pod. And his mission is to scout out a forward operating base on enemy territory. Uh, we have detected that they have set up a runway and bunker in a contested area of the map somewhere near the large crater in Kerbin. So of course with any uh, zone of conflict there needs to be some scouting done to figure out what kind of threat we're dealing with. So Bill was sent to uh, assess the situation. Here we are in the control view, and you can see we're approaching the enemy's base, the opposition's forward operating base. It looks like they've got quite a few units there. Now I do want to mention throughout this video there's going to be a lot of cuts, and that's what because halfway through it I switched to 64-bit KSP, which is possible in 1.04, and it was quite crashy, if I was to describe it properly. But it did handle FPS better, so I think it was worth the trade-off. So as you can see, we've spotted ourselves an anti-aircraft gun. It looks like it's equipped with a flat cannon and four missiles, as well as a radar. Now the only reason the enemy can't see Bill's truck right now is because Bill doesn't actually have a radar or any sort of pinging equipment on it, so it's not easy to detect. It's small, it blends with the terrain, and it's well curved sized, so. Yeah. Oh, and as you can see, they've also got a fighter stationed on the runway. Now, that's one of the old fighters. I don't imagine they'll keep it around for an actual battle. It must be sort of like a decoy so it can drive us off, but we're not scared of that fighter. It's obsolete by this point. <laughs> I just messed with the camera. So yeah, and it looks like we're ready to get headed off. Although we do need to check one more thing, relocating to a better vantage point so we can see uh, what looks like an anti-ground turret. Oh yeah, but that would be an artillery gun on tracks. Though it looks like a pretty crudely put together design, it's quite obvious that the opposition isn't very rich. So the best thing that they've been able to afford is that drone fighter, unless they impress us later on. But so far everything looks pretty crudely put together, maybe this fight will be easy. The only issue is they have more supporters, so their army, for all intents and purposes, is slightly more obsolete, but bigger. So the question is, power over numbers? Or numbers over power? I guess we're just gonna have to find out. So everyone, say hello to North Kerbin Dynamics' best scout plane in its arsenal. This is known as the Flatty. It is basically a small, stealthy, and, well, flat, judging by the name and its look, scout plane that's meant to quickly infiltrate enemy territory and hopefully take images before it's even within range of the turrets. I guess we're gonna have to find out. Hmm. So as you can see, 15 kilometers away, this thing already has an IOM. 
which means we're going to get ourselves some nice GPS images. We'll just blow it up so you can see it. Now we need to designate for GPS just in case we have some sort of GPS weapon added to our uh, arsenal, such as like an artillery missile. As you can see, they have removed the drone from the runway, so it looks like they might be replacing that soon. And what would that be? Now there's a vehicle that I've never seen before, and it looks scary. I'm pretty sure I spotted two very large missiles on it. That could be one of the most recent SCUD projects that I've been notified about. Our recent intel has told us that they developed a long-range artillery missile known as the SCUD. And, uh, seeing it deployed here could mean the end of our forward operating base before we even get in a chance to retaliate. So, our flatty's job is done. We've GPS designated all the vital points of the enemy's forward operating base, and now it's just a matter of landing. Of course, Landing this thing is easier said than done, as I overshoot the runway. So, quick turnaround. We just got a scramble notification from headquarters. It looks like there is a scout helicopter from the opposition that is heading in this direction and attempting to get some GPS designations on us, which all but confirms the fact that there are Scud missiles back at their base. We need to act fast. We've launched ourselves our new fighter. It's small, it's quick, and it's maneuverable. The K-16A, I believe, which is a placeholder name, really, because it hasn't really left prototype stages. Got ourselves a lock, and let's test to see if that helicopter has good defenses. And looks like it does not. This is what I love about BD Armory, it's just so majestic. And as you can see, the sun is beginning to set over Kerman. This could develop into a night battle if we do not act fast enough. Which could be bad, because a scud fired under cover of darkness might be a lot harder to shoot down. Now, we need to make a quick, very quick dash to the enemy's forward operating base because we need to basically stop all scud missiles from firing. Alright, it looks like there's a third contact on the runway. Is that... Oh. It's a new experimental fighter from the opposition and we just got some anti-aircraft missiles headed this way. And one of their new CBIWS cannons. Ooh, this does not look too good. Okay guys, it looks like the enemy just fired a scud missile. And, yeah, it is headed directly for our deployment. We have to act fast. We have to take down both the fighter and the scud, or we're doomed. And this is where I wonder why I did not just gun the throttle. So quickly, fire two AIM-120s at the KU-26, this is what it's been designated as. Looks like good hits, don't mind that, that would be uh, my Skype notifications. And now time to deal with the Scud, and it may already be too late. That thing's three kilometers out. <sighs> RFOB's toast. Come on. If we can break proper mock speed, then maybe we might have a chance. 
I foolishly just wasted my missile without being in range. Hmm. It looks like the scud's probably gonna hit. Oh, let's hope it does not hit our defenses or any of our vital points. We can only hope. Well, in this portion, I'd like to mention that the scud missiles from my BD Armory extension, a link to which will be added in the description. It is the first mod ever to add proper nukes in the KSP. Ones with proper effects. You've probably seen it before. North Kerbin Dynamics. Guess who that's for. Anyways, back to where we were. Oh no! But seriously. It looks like it might overshoot. Oh, please overshoot. It did not overshoot. <sighs> looks like it hit the runway. Minor runway damage. That runway is resilient, but, you know, it's a scud. And also, one of the big, um, one of the big selling points of my add-on is the explosion effects. I put a lot of time and effort into those, so if you just want to check them out to see what the effects look like. Redhead. Oh, looks like there's a... Something glitched out with my AA. Weird. Oh well. It looks like that'll have to just solve itself. That might be why the scud got through. The AA couldn't target it. Now we gotta make another attack run. Okay guys, it looks like the truck just fired a second scud missile. But this time we're heading straight forward. If that sidewinder can hit it. No. Oh no. Come on. We just lost a lot of thrust. A lot of speed. I don't know if this will make it. We've got a couple of AIM-9s after it, but there's no way of telling if it'll hit. Looks like one of them's getting close. And that's an overshoot. If they adjusted their targeting, because they could have easily designated more than three GPS coordinates, one of them could be targeted at the vital center of the base. <sighs> Let's hope it does not hit. Let's hope our air defenses actually do something about it, that's what we really need to hope for. These scud missiles have a very long range. The distance between our two forward operating bases is about 20 kilometers. That missile is just... Easily crushing that distance. Come on. This time we're easily hitting the mock speed. Maybe we can catch up to this gun. Looks like dusk has just progressed. It's starting to get dark. It truly looks like a dark day, but wait! Oh, are those Pac 3 inner missiles? The anti aircraft defenses. Yes! Oh. oh, our defenses just saved the FOB from the last scud missile. It looks as if our base is saved. The anti-aircraft defenses did a mighty fine job of uh, popping back out of the ground and saving our butts. And now, all that's left to do is land. We can't really deal with what's over at the end of the base. This is not a ground strike aircraft yet. That, my friends, is for another episode. For now, we've got to put this thing on the ground and hopefully trust in Valentina Kerman to do uh, a good landing for once in her life. If you don't know much about Valentina, she's our top fighter pilot, but sadly she is terrible at landings and we have lost many millions of dollars. And with a damaged runway from that first scud hit, we have no way of being sure if she can actually land this plane properly. But hey, here's hopes. This is a pretty cheap fighter because of its, you know, size. So, it wouldn't be as much of a loss as most of our experimental aircraft were. This landing approach is looking a bit fishy. She's going a bit too fast. Oh, come on. Come on, Val. Oh, that's a bounce. 
And there's the damage section of the runway. Nope. Oh, no. Nope, 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 nope. And come on, stop it properly. Nope. It's sliding? Oh. And it looks like we just lost another aircraft. I think it's not all that bad. The ECM jammer on the cockpit, the two most expensive parts of this jet, are, uh, are salvaged. So, uh, yeah. This has been uh, episode 3 of Kerbal Conflicts. See you next time for some uh, more awesome stuff and more on my add-on. I'll catch you all later. Bye.